From this lecture, we are starting a very important topic and the topic is energy and power signals. This topic is important because you will have questions from this topic in your university examinations as well as in your competitive examinations. In this lecture, we are going to understand how to calculate the energy and power of continuous time signals. We are going to derive the formula for the calculation of total energy and average power. And once we understand how to calculate the total energy and average power, we will understand what are energy signals and what are power signals. I will try to cover as many examples as possible and I will also explain what are neither energy and nor power signals. So let's begin with the explanation. You can see one electric circuit on your screen and in this circuit we have resistance R across which the voltage is equal to Vt and the current through resistance R is equal to Rt from Ohm's law from Ohm's law we already know voltage Vt is equal to current Rt multiplied with the resistance R and we are interested in calculating the total energy and the average power of the continuous time signals and because of this we will focus on instantaneous power the instantaneous power I will represent by Pt and it is equal to I square T multiplied with the resistance. This instantaneous power is the power dissipated by the resistance R and by using the Ohm's law we can write I T as V T over R. So P T we can also write as V square T over R square multiplied with R. We have obtained this result from the Ohm's law. R and R will cancel out and in this way we have V square T over R. So we have these two results using the Ohm's law and we can find out the total energy using this result. For this we will assume we will assume resistance R is equal to 1 Ohm. Remember this point and as R is equal to 1 Ohm from here the instantaneous power Pt is equal to I square T and from here it is equal to V square T. So instantaneous power is equal to V square T or I square T. Now we will calculate the total energy first then we will calculate the average power and to understand this we will first revise something about power energy and work. If you remember your physics lecture in class 11th you must have seen power is equal to work done upon the total time or we can write work is equal to power multiplied with the total time. So what is work and what is energy? Energy is the capacity of doing work. For example, if you are having something which is storing the energy, let's say E, then this object here is promising us that it will perform some work in the coming future. And let's say that work is W. So energy is the promise made by the work to be executed in the future. You can understand it in a simple way. If something is having some energy, then it will do some work in the coming future. In that way, we can say that energy and work are closely related and mathematically we can write energy as work. If work is equal to power into time, energy is also equal to power into time. We have instantaneous power equal to I square T or V square T. You can take any of the two cases. I will consider instantaneous power as V square T for our derivation and the total energy in this way is equal to integration from minus infinity to infinity instantaneous power PT DT. You can understand this from here and as PT is equal to V square T, we can write the total energy as integration from minus infinity to infinity V square T dt. Now let's calculate the average power. This one here is the total energy and now we will calculate the average power. The average power calculation is not difficult because we have already seen how to calculate the average of continuous time signals. The average power I will represent by capital P only 
and it is the total power which we can obtain by integrating the instantaneous power from minus infinity to infinity and then dividing it by the total time. So I will integrate it from minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 and then I will divide it by the total time and as the integration should be from minus infinity to infinity I will put limit t tends to infinity. In this way if you put t equal to infinity here you will have minus infinity and when t is infinity here it is equal to infinity. So you can see the range of integration it is from minus infinity to infinity and now I will replace pt by v square t so I can write the formula as limit t tends to infinity 1 by t integration minus t by 2 t by 2 v square t dt. So we have obtained the formula for the calculation of total energy and the average power but there is one thing we still require to do and that is the generalization of the formula. Here we have v square t in both the formulas and as you already know in case of electronics signal is nothing but the variation of voltage or current with respect to time. In both the cases we have a square of vt and vt is the variation of voltage with respect to time and if you choose this result pt equal to i square t you will have variation of current with respect to time in both the cases. So we can write x t in place of vt so that we can generalize our formula. So let's do it quickly. I will first write down the formula for total energy and from now on we will use the formula which I am writing here. Total energy is represented by uppercase E and it is equal to integration from minus infinity to infinity x t square dt. Energy cannot be negative so it is good to take mod here. So this is the complete formula for the total energy mod x t square dt integration from minus infinity to infinity and this formula is for periodic and non-periodic signals both but in case of average power in case of average power formula is different for periodic signals and formula is different for non-periodic signals. I will first write down the formula for periodic signals. As you already know in calculation of average we integrate the periodic signal in only one fundamental time period. Because if you integrate periodic signal from minus infinity to infinity you will have the same result as the integration in one fundamental time period. So the signal will be like this integration mod xt square dt and we will integrate it over one fundamental time period. So this is the difference of upper limit and the lower limit and we will divide it by t naught. So this is the formula for periodic signals and in case of non-periodic signals the formula is similar to the formula I have written above limit t tends to infinity here t is simply the time not the time period but here t naught is the fundamental time period 1 by t integration minus t by 2 to t by 2 mod x t square dt this is for non periodic signals. So I want you to write down these three formulas so that we can use it directly while solving the questions and it is also very important to find out whether the signal is energy signal or the power signal. The expressions we are having here are the normalized expressions for total energy and the average power and I am calling them normalized expressions because we have assumed resistance equal to 1 ohm. So remember this point, these expressions are normalized expressions. Now we will understand the importance of signal energy and signal power calculations. These calculations are important for the energy spectral density, for the energy spectral density. It is also important for the power spectral density power spectral density. It is used in auto correlation, auto correlation and it is also used in SNR calculations, SNR calculations 
SNR is the abbreviated form of signal to noise ratio. When we will study the Fourier transform, Fourier transform and Fourier series, the classification of signals as energy signal and power signal will be very helpful and important to understand the Fourier transform and the Fourier series. So this is all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will understand what are energy signals.